I either shoot or I don't shoot. And re it's regardless right. of what camera I use. Yeah, I think a lot of times shoot. you approach it sort of mathematically or money thinking, not artistically yeah. sometimes. And you're like, well, why am I shooting this if I can't sell it? It's hard to get out of that yeah. framework yeah. sometimes, I think. Yeah, but you know? I have to because... Uh, you know, being, I have to diversify. That's what we talked about. That's what you've been talking about. And right. uh, I see myself being so uh, reliant on one or two people that if the money stops with that person, then I could be financially ruined. And you mean not, clients yeah, when you say that? So that has yeah. to change. And I have right. to figure out other ways to make money, other clients or right. other revenue streams because I just can't go under. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because one of the photographers I respect the most, and I guarantee Ray knows what name I'm going to say when I talk about the photographer who I re respect probably the most. You want to take a guess at it? I know. It's, I know who it is. It's Coward. <laughs> Absolutely. Jeremy Coward. <laughs> and it was interesting because I heard him speaking not too long ago. Um, I forget what the topic, what, what the, the platform was, but he was talking and he talked about how, and this is a guy who I respect his work tremendously, the, what he creates photographically. And the clients he gets, the TV work and the celebrity work and the music industry work he gets. And he was trying to say he has 10 streams of income, 10 different ways that he makes money. And he feels that that's what photographers need to be doing in 2014. And that had an impact on me because it's someone I really respect who's saying it, someone who's succeeding as a photographer who's saying, selling photographs is only one of my streams of income. I have multiple streams of income, so I thought that was interesting. And for me, I have a couple at least, like I teach this jujitsu class uh, twice a week at a private school on the Upper East Side, and that provides income for me. So my income is not 100% photo-based, now it's teaching jujitsu and selling photographs yeah. and the occasional rental of the studio, you know, to but people I like Sean think his, tomorrow. His 10, <laughs> his ten uh, revenue streams are all photography based. Not We're really. Related. They're related. Sort of, they're not like teaching jujitsu, but it would, might be teaching a workshop, developing an yeah, app. They're in the same world, but they're, it's still different than years ago. They're when, all about him being a photographer. So what, what were his 10? He didn't name them all, but I well, think they're... what do you think they are? I would think, again, I would think there's some from teaching workshops, selling DVDs. Um, Licensing selling, images. Selling no, that would still books. be the selling photos, but I think of some of it would be like similarly photo-related. Hire photo photographer related. for hire. He probably has a website. Yeah, but those would be still the same thing. But I think no, no, those are apps, ten different revenue streams. You know, no, but like app would be a little different. There are, they probably are somewhat photo related, though. I think they are definitely photo related. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there might be one in there that's not photo related. There so might be he, one. If, let me ask you a question, yes. and Ray, as well. If mm -hmm. you can add more photo related uh, revenue streams to your, you know, catalog, what would they be? For me, for yeah. example, years ago, I used to make a ton of money, a lot of money selling lifestyle photographs. What I would do is just get models together, and I'd do these scenarios. I used to couples. buy some of them. There you go, right? <laughs> you know, we'd get the models kissing, we'd get the guy and girl kissing, get couples arguing. you just do the sexy girls solo stuff, and magazines like Smooth, Black Men, Today's Black Women, mm -hmm. and stock agency, like at that time, it was retina for me. They would buy those images, right. and I did at least 30 book covers off stock images. It was fantastic. Urban Books would buy them, um, Doubletree Books would buy them, just mainstream book companies too would buy these images. But for me, stock died when this thing called micro stock came out and then images went for $5. So now you're supposed to be producing thousands of images and selling them for five bucks each. And I didn't like that business model as much as I liked selling them for anywhere between 150 to 300 to 500 to thousands when it was a book cover. So that would be a stream I would love to do again if the money was right, just stock photography because it was so much fun directing those shots yeah. and creating them. Well, what else? Know? What about in the digital space? You said you did a workshop, so that's one. Actually, yeah, that's, an, that's a re revenue stream for me. I just did a workshop at Unique Photo um, three weeks ago, maybe, okay. and that was great. You know, it was 35 people attended. They were all paying, and it was great. I just taught some lighting techniques, and I had a ball doing it, you know, so that okay. would be another revenue stream for me. Not like yeah. weddings and... You know, sometimes I give it thought. I think there's still a lot of money in that. But that world hasn't, like, opened itself to me yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of open to it, I think. But for years, I had never considered it. Okay. Now, maybe, mm -hmm. a little bit. But I know with show, you absolutely have more of a revenue stream than the magazine. Where does the magazine itself, the magazine, where does that fit into the revenue stream? This, I'm holding it up again for the camera if you're uh, looking at YouTube. <laughs> How, what percentage of the income for show comes directly from the sale of the magazine? 
uh, directly or indirectly, and can you put it down so you stop blocking? <laughs> I'm blocking your shot. Yeah, they want to see Eric Amina and Sin Santana. Well, they don't want to see you. Open up, open up the magazine. And this is beautiful, Sin Santana. Go right even there. closer to the camera. So, there we Sin go. Santana. There's Sin Santana. The rest you have to, you know, go to mm -hmm. your newsstand and purchase it. Oh, and before we even answer the question, I think your girl Erica yelled at Ray, didn't she, Ray? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, when you were, t oh. Yeah, but she's, I mean. You know, you, just you watch the show every week. With that. I know I don't have a thick skin, but she did <laughs> scream on me for something, and I just um, Sean just said, "Don't worry about it," and then just continue. Yeah. If you watch the show, she fights literally every week. She's throwing plates, she's throwing chairs. I mean, I love the show. Yeah. She fights like crazy on the well, show. The funny so. thing about that is that you know Ray was taking behind the scenes pictures, and so right. was I. Right. And I had one of the behind the scenes pictures retouched, you know, at my own expense, and sent it to her. And now someone sends me a picture of my picture on the back of her phone case. So she's <laughs> that she's selling, you mean, or just exactly. her own copy? Exactly. So I've, mm. no, she's selling it. So Get I've already, them. you know, threatened to, to sue over that because mm. that's one of our revenue streams is licensing images. Wow. So it wasn't Ray's shot. Was your shot? No, it was my mm. shot. Um, <laughs> that's good. On, on the Fuji, um, <laughs> and you know, licensing images, and is one of our big revenue streams, and we license images to. A calendar company out of Hawaii. But are you able to license? Uh, and for for what you're doing, Erica Mena is a celebrity. That's a celebrity for the world that you're shooting. It's yeah. not celebrity for People Magazine, but for the world you're shooting, it's a celebrity. Mm -hmm. When you shoot it for the magazine, do you have a release that's allowing you to use it commercially elsewhere from of Show course. Magazine? Of course. No, but that's a that's a big. Of course, when I shoot celebrities, I never well, have the right to she's license still it commercially. An urban model, you know. So right. It's not like I'm shooting Mariah Carey. Right. Who's not going to sign a model release? Per right. Se. But she doesn't mind. Like she never says, or if she has some manager, they never go. Well, she's not going to sign a release that's going to let you put it like on a calendar, well, separate from the I magazine. Well, I mean, they would if she was that big at the time. But I, she's not that big. Maybe she's bigger now. But at the time that we contracted to do this shoot, it wasn't. You know, right. she wasn't like super big. The fir her first season of Love and Hip Hop, she wasn't. You know, right. she was a. Okay, but she was still kind of like a side, you know. Yeah, I mean, she's well known in, in our world. In that world, she was definitely well known, though. Like right. for the King, Double XL, Black Men, Smooth Show. Mm -hmm. She's known. That's how she got on a show. People right. knew her. And she was even on the Kardashian show for a little while. Right. On uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians or right. the Miami version of it, at least. But, but go back again to um, what percentage would you say comes from the magazine itself, I mean, the sales so, of know, that? Where does be, that fit in? You have to be more specific. Well, if you're talking about from sales, I mean. Right. Is it like 10% or is it still 50, 60, 70%? No, I mean, I don't think it ever was 50, 60, 70% for us. It, it was always just been, from a profit standpoint, it's always been like more like around 10% or so. Wow. From, so from where a straight revenue standpoint, right? yeah, I mean, the, the magazine generates, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, but that's, you know, you cover your costs with that. So you basically... Uh, breaking even on the print side unless you're selling advertising which in this sort of format we really don't sell advertising. right the only thing you advertise is like if you do Our a website products. for the we girl have, or something we, you know this is a catalog it's an advertisement for what we do for our brand for our lifestyle for the models so it's a platform basically to introduce our products which are primarily the models and all the other derivative and ancillary products that we have like DVDs and our mobile apps and our website. Mm -hmm. But let's go through some of them. So you sell DVDs of what, behind the scenes of the shoot? We sell DVDs shoot? of behind the scenes shoot, but it's mostly like, you know, kind of sexy videos of the girls dancing. They're like dancing and posing. Yeah. Do you sell that literally on DVD? Are people still buying DVDs? Well, people are still buying DVDs. We haven't produced any new ones right. in a couple of years, just because right. like you said, I mean, a lot of people yeah. I mean, I threw I mean, my player I still, out. I still have a DVD. Of course, nah. we still have DVD players, but. I threw mine out about three years ago. Yeah. I just, even when I still had DVDs, I was like, I hate this thing. I just want it. I was, it was the worst format they ever invented for a media. It, it's yeah. horrible in every way. So most of our, our, our videos are probably viewed more now on our website, right. YouTube, et cetera. Right. But in terms of revenue streams, we've got DVDs. We've got a, a website that I mean, they we pay. Have, we have eight probably eight revenue streams right, right now. But let's run through them. There's the there's a website, because I saw you had some special well, on like I'll, I'll Instagram. Run, I'll run through them. Yeah, we let's go through them. We have what we call single copy sales, which is the newsstand actually mm -hmm. purchasing the magazine on the newsstand. Right. That's one. Mm -hmm. The second one, and this is pretty typical for most magazines, at least like four or five of them. Mm -hmm. The second one is going to be um, subscriptions. 
So those are people who are subscribing to the magazine. Right. Um, six copies for twenty-four dollars, or twelve mm -hmm. copies for forty-four dollars. Right. Um, then we have merchandise. Now merchandise are going to be back issues, mm -hmm. calendars, DVDs, and what other whatever other merchandise we're selling. We used to sell T-shirts at some point. Right. So that's uh, what four. Right. Mm -hmm. So number five would be mobile. So that right. means being able to purchase or look at Show Magazine on your mobile phone or right. on your... That's the issue? Or is, and by the way, I'm, I guess you hear these sirens. It's like, I'm hoping they can hear well, you. Well, we're in this New York. Is, this so, is Times Square, man. This is yeah, like, this is God knows what's going on. Pretty typical. <laughs> but go on. So what happens have, when you buy have, it for the phone? What are you getting? The magazine well, or individual pictures? Well, you can download the magazine if you, um, you know, buy it from the Zinio app. Um, but you can also just get individual pictures or individual videos. Right. Which used to be a, a really big revenue source for us when we were on the iTunes store, um, you know, even just uh, other, there used to be a lot more companies out there. You remember Jamster? We had like right. a deal with Jamster. Right. But did something with happen with Zane. that? Did that like well, the change business, for some reason? Yeah, it's called the App Store. <laughs> it's right. Exchange. Number one, Apple right. kicked out all the sexy publications oh, out, of, out of off of iTunes and out of the App Store. Right. But the App Store also crushed Jamster and all those other sort of things. Maybe they're bigger in other right. countries. Right. So you can still download pictures or, yeah. of showgirls in Europe and stuff right. like that. Remember but when Steve the, Jobs said that the iPhone was freedom and he said it's freedom from all these things. He said freedom from pornography. <laughs> so he was very anti like pornography and, and anti sexy. Yeah. And they still are. Yeah. yeah they he, still are. So yeah. That kind of cut down on mobile, but we still right. have some mobile properties out right. there. Right. So, what else? The other streams of income. Okay. What so else? after mobile, then you have internet-based revenue stream, which right. is going to be mm -hmm. our website, right. Showgirls Exclusive. We have six websites, showgirlsexclusive.com being the biggest one, and that's a right. subscription-based model. Right. Um, you can also go to zinio.com and download Show Magazine, so that counts under internet. Right. And then also, with uh, if you have a PS3 or a PSP, right. you can download a screensaver. So that's right. internet. What does that cost, like a screensaver? You know what? I, it's probably like a $1.99 or something like bad. that. I really don't know yeah. what it is. But they can I, add I up. I don't have it's a just, PS3. Yeah. But we're also going to be on Roku and um, right. I don't know about Apple TV, but we'd be yeah, on yeah, Roku they may be as like, well, yeah. where you can mm -hmm. download a show magazine-themed screensaver. Right. So that's, that's cool. internet. So if you're right. counting, I believe we're up to, what, like six right that's now? That's a lot, yeah. So yeah, that's keep going. So number seven is our new... Um, fashion blog that we're starting right which is called showgirls tv and it's going to be a fashion okay. and lifestyle blog we should do something at um fashion week i shot a whole bunch yeah, of videos to hire, at shows i would love yeah. to get more lifestyle footage and stuff yeah. like that from from both of you guys yeah. we're not really dealing with like celebrities other than yeah. if they are urban celebrities right. no we did some part, stuff i did some stuff for a hype hair where we like had a mod had a, a host and we did video interviews with the nail companies um, these mm -hmm. I forgot the name of it. God, that's so bad. <laughs> but we followed these nail people, and then we showed how they did the nails, and we interviewed the nail technician and showed them actually painting the nails backstage at the show. Okay. And yeah, I'm going to send you a link. It was great. good stuff. Yeah, send me yeah. a link. If you yeah, have, it was nice stuff. If you have yeah. more stuff like that that is fashion, beauty, lifestyle, yeah. fitness, yeah. travel-oriented, yeah. you know, we'd love to have that. that yeah, sort that could of, be cool. We're going to aggregate a lot of this content, and it's basically about you know, mm -hmm. what these models do with their clothes on. You know, it's right. kind of like, okay. It's the opposite of show. Yeah, shooting, you know, <laughs> doing photo shoots is actually like maybe 2 to 5% of, of what they do. Right. But they're doing a lot of stuff. They're hosting yeah. parties. They're traveling internationally. Yeah. Yeah. They're working out. Yeah. And they're writing on Instagram they're, the they're other 98% of the time. You know, they're doing <laughs> cookbooks and they're doing a lot of different things. So that's number seven. Number eight right. Right. is um, our agency. We're starting, well, we have an agency called Show Talent Management and, you know, right. through LA Casting. So that's uh, we're booking models all the time to um, to host host uh, parties right. and host events. What's the price range from the low end of a girl to a high end that they get? And what do they do if they host a party? What does that mean? I mean, hosting a party primarily it used to be you you got you promoted the event you like on got, your Twitter and stuff. Yeah, Twitter or right. your MySpace. I'm saying used right. to be. You got to the event, you actually got up on stage with the DJ and you talked on the mic and right. you did a whole, you know, you brought people up on stage and you actually signed your calendar or your right. magazine Now this cover. sounds to me, this sounds to me the way it should be. So That's however you say it be. changed, it better be yeah. changed for the now, better because that sounded no, really good to now me. Now it's, you mm -hmm. provide an image for a flyer and that's 90% right. of it. I need yeah. a sexy image for the flyer. Right. 
five, the other five percent of it is you promote the event, and the other five right. percent is you show up with five of your hot girls and you stand on the back of the banquet. Yeah. You don't interact with anyone, mind you. Yeah. You just stand up so everyone can see you. Yeah. And that's hosting a party. It's terrible because everybody's going to the party, not going to the party for the girl, but they know she's there and then they're not mm -hmm. even like meeting her or talking to her mm -hmm. or even standing near her. That's kind of tacky yeah. to me. So that's a weird change. Back to the revenue streams. That was eight, right? You're counting. Yeah. So actually, mm -hmm. we're on, our, on the verge of getting to nine and ten because number right. nine mm -hmm. would be miscellaneous, which includes uh, li licensing images, right. hosting, and bookings. Right. So a uh, hosting is if you pay me to come host a party, you could pay us $1,500 and right. it could be an official show magazine casting party. A right. booking is if, you know, we just book someone to be um, a Beyonce's body double during one of her video shoots. So right. that's different from the LA right. casting and the show talent management right. because that's more about like putting people in commercials and putting right. them in, you know, catalog shoots and right. that whole sort of thing. So that's into that miscellaneous world. is like number nine. Right. And then number 10, which is going to be coming up is, you know, the, our TV arm and, you know, we're right. pitching a reality show out there. Right oh, now. that's cool. So once that gets into development, right. then you're looking at like, you number know, 10. and then I know we'll you and I talked right. about, well, you talked about it. I'm trying to not trying to say I came up with the idea, but you were talking about the possibility of doing even like a traveling burlesque show one of these days where like these girls yeah. are live in front of you and like dancing and I guess taking off a little well, bit of clothes the, the or business, something. The business because of you know. Instagram and YouTube, you know, has to change. Like the, what these models have to offer has to evolve and we have to evolve. We can't, you know, depend on newsstand revenue or even right. just digital revenue. So the next evolution is, okay, I've seen these girls in my calendar. I've seen them on YouTube. I want to see them in person now and not just yeah. hosting a party, but I want to see them doing more stuff. You want to see them doing so, kind of what they're doing in a magazine, which is yeah. being sexy, not just walking a red carpet for two seconds right. and standing with a sparkly right. bottle of champagne being walked over to yeah. them. Yeah, and, I think that's a huge to, idea. Thanks to, yeah. um, you know, thanks to reality TV, you kind of see that now. You kind of see right. the Tahiris and the Erica Menas and the Brooke Bailey. Melissa Ford and Melissa Ford's, you mm -hmm. know, doing that transition. So now you right. can actually see these women doing other stuff. Right. But the difference I'm talking about is interacting with them in person right. or seeing them on a live show. Right. So that's, you know, that sort of thing is another revenue stream. And, and, yeah. and another revenue stream, which is why we're here, right. is, has been like a really big hit for us, has been photography. Right. I didn't even count that. I'm up to like 11, right. 12 yeah, before right you now. can get to pictures I, before again. Before I even got to photography. And we started right. that, what, like April, May. Right. And this is different. This is where you're actually finding girls who want to look like they're in show magazine. So you're photographing them in a show magazine well, style. It, it, that and it's finding girls who want to be models, who want to be in show magazine. Right. And you're charging so, them yeah. to be photographed. Yeah. So, or, or you could just book a shoot. You know, right. we've had, like I said, people book maternity shoots and mm -hmm. people book lifestyle shoots and fashion But that's shoots. weird. Like, would you look at the show magazine, you know, like, would you look at the show magazine photography and go, I want them to do my uh, wedding, not wedding, would you say maternity pictures? Like, I wouldn't I've think that's a match, maternity though. Pictures. I mean, I'm sure you they could as a person. They, they but I'm not putting baby strange. oil on the, on the mother. So <laughs> on the babies? <laughs> right. So it's not looking the same, but it's, it's well lit. Right. You know, it's definitely well lit. You know, we're putting eight lights on them. Right. So, you know, their hair is lit and you have the side lights and you have the light from right. down below and, you know, you have the right. three lights in front of them. You have the octa, the umbrella and the small octa. Right. So, yeah, it's it's beautifully lit. And but, you know, the right. retouching is a little different, obviously. Yeah. Not like, as we're high not, gloss we're not trying or to make them, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we're not focusing on, you know, cutting in a waist or doing anything like that. It's right. Not as high gloss. But the photography rev revenue stream has, has been tremendous. And, right. But the, what's happened is the business model has changed. Right. Yeah, I think that's fascinating. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier. We talk about some other photographer going, well, I've got 10 streams of income. I think that's interesting. And for me personally, that's not something that was really on my mind five years ago because just selling pictures was fine. I was making a ton of money just selling photographs mm -hmm. and taking assignment jobs, and that's it. But I think it is something to, you know, sort of just keep in mind, you know, the idea of just different revenue streams. And I think you guys do a really good job of that, of really monetizing beyond just a print magazine. It's right. interesting yeah, I know that, that you do um, that. I know that when I was um, 
like probably three or four years ago, I got into some trouble. Uh, my primary source of income was my agency, and unfortunately, I got into a, 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 a scuffle, and my <laughs> agency suspended me, and that just totally, like, you know, shocked my world. Right. Because my main source of revenue was immediately cut off and that was for seven months and I had to right. figure out and reestablish where I could make money and uh, I kind of gotten comfortable again and I have to figure out again how I can make money and um, make sure that that doesn't happen again because mm -hmm. if someone decides to fire me then where what am I going to do? And I never right. want to be in that position. Right. But so I think you I'm made a change too, though, in a sense that I think years ago you were more money focused than you are now. Because I think, like say, whatever it be, maybe five years ago, you were not willing to take even time off to do one type of physical activity like a jujitsu. You just were not willing to. You were like, I'm going to work, I'm going to work, and I'm going to work. And I'm not sure what the change was. Maybe it was losing that source of income and you realizing that it wasn't that important to be making that much money. And I think you, I'm guessing, tell me if I'm wrong, you decided to take a bit of a pay cut, but devote some time to jujitsu, devote some time to hiking, devote some time to yoga. All of those things affect your income, but I personally think you're better off that way, being more well-rounded and not just money focused, but being focused on personal development yeah, is mean, huge. I think personal development is very important and that's definitely something that I was um, lacking, but it, I think that the primary reason was the economy change. I mean, like in 2008, everyone was like, was mm -hmm. complaining and crying, and I, me included. So my lifestyle had to change. Um, like I was making significantly less money, and I've realized that I don't necessarily need to make the same amount of money to be happy. I just have to be more focused. I have to understand what makes me happy. It's right. not the money. Right. It's the it's having purpose and I love listening to other people like Sean uh, listening to Sean and having 11 revenue streams I'm like well, yeah I gotta get my game up I gotta right it makes your head spin up, right up. yeah 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 I like can't get yeah caught out there again right that is crazy but, but in, in my yeah. own in my own way right so right. 